Hello, everyone. I know you're used to uh, hearing Owen starting off, but it's going to be me today. So how's everybody doing today? I hope you're all doing well. I see lots of things coming up in the live chat today. We are so honored to be joined by Stuart Hay from The Journey Back. I know a lot of you have been out to see that production. I've seen a little bit of stuff online about it. Um, so let's get started with Owen. Owen, how are you today? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you, Victoria. It's a Good to be out here with Stuart and good to get obviously, obviously talk a bit with Rangers, talk a bit of the journey back as well. And uh, mm -hmm. in what is a exceptionally manic week for me this week with uh, obviously a, a, a little game apparently that's happening on Sunday, apparently, I don't know much about it. And then obviously with, uh, with my American about. commitment commitments as well with the NFL draft coming up this week, it's a, it's a really busy week for me this week. <laughs> I could imagine. And how are you doing today, Stuart? I'm fantastic. Uh, thanks very much for having me on. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, to kind of come on and just, as I say, meet meet more people and, and really kind of get the word out about what I'm doing and, uh, and things like that. So I'm really grateful. Thank you very much for, for having me on. Uh, good. Good. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show and taking the time to do this. So obviously, we all know about your production, The Journey Back. We've seen it online. Some has been to see it in person. Where did yeah. that all start out for you? Uh, it all started out... Uh, I was doing a uh, football comedy sketches uh, for the BBC. Uh, there was a show in Scotland called Online Excuse. Uh, that was all about football comedy. Uh, that they would air once a year at Hogmanay, and uh, I started working with that. And uh, I was writing sketches for that and things like that, and, and realised it was it was worthwhile. It was really really working. Uh, doing a lot of sketches on my own uh, and putting them on my own social media channels, it kind of really grew and it went from strength to strength really, really, really quickly. Uh, so for the past five or six years or something like that, I've just been kind of building on it. And uh, I got an opportunity last year to uh, be part of the cast for a Rangers play uh, in Glasgow called Rally Around the Rangers. And I'd never done any of that before. It was... <laughs> terrifying i was being a, a stage actor been like doing theater just it was never something that kind of crossed my mind to do but i took the punt and i went and tried it out and it was fantastic i absolutely loved it loved every minute it just like to, to kind of see a live rangers crowd and, and and they're just singing along with you and you kind of really feel really part of it and especially being a fan myself like it was something really connected with me uh, and because I had the background in writing and doing kind of Scottish football comedy and being a Rangers fan, I thought to myself, I, I really want to do that. I think I feel as if, if I'd done it, I'd do, a, I'd, I'd, I'd do it justice kind of thing. And uh, I mean, the story with Rangers in the past 10 years, it was something that was meant to be written. I mean, it's one of the greatest stories in football of all time. Yeah. I mean, this guy in football just completely sent down to the pits. Uh, of uh, of their country and having to fight their way back up and just everything oh, that came yeah. with it and then the journey proper back to winning the league again first time in 10 years all everybody that just went through that entire journey and then having like a Europa League final and I mean there's not many football clubs in the world that can do what we've done in the last 10 years uh, mm -hmm. and love to tell and so it was something that I thought that's the perfect thing to do. Uh, managed to manage to write it, managed to uh, put it on in a very good place. The that Modelo, that was crazy, absolutely mental. But the main thing was it sold out. It sold out in like four minutes. So the interest was there already. You didn't really need to do anything. Rangers fans were willing and ready to have something like that. Uh, and they don't get to do a lot. They don't get to see an awful lot of that uh, kind of thing. There's not really a lot of live theatre entertainment based around Rangers. And uh, I felt as if there was a gap in the market for that. And I'll gladly fill it when everybody's enjoying it. So that's what we are, mate. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, I could imagine, like, the crowd that you have is probably, like, a similar crowd to when you're actually in the stadium. That kind of passion, it's, that it's liveliness, like that. that singing yeah. along, I can imagine that with you. It's scary. It is. It's, it's terrifying. It's, it's like a, the only way I could kind of describe it, it's more like an away crowd. They're a lot more vocal. <laughs> so if you go to Ibrox <laughs> and things like that, like, I mean, Ibrox is fantastic and it, it, that, that atmosphere is always fantastic. But that away crowd, that total just energized kind of crowd uh, that that's exactly what they show uh, doing these shows are and you've got about three three thousand people just ready for a good time uh, and it's brilliant it's absolutely crazy i mean you can i remember that when we done it when we done it in amadillo there uh before we even went on like the show starts with simply the best but the curtains are still closed and uh, so when it started, I mean, the, the curtain was shaking, like absolutely shaking, like you could <laughs> visibly see it. Uh, and it was brilliant. Uh, and then the curtain just opened and there's 3,000 people there. 
just absolutely having a great time ever. So it's brilliant. It's a, it's, it's brilliant with the with the people who come to see it. it what they uh, make of the show, like they, they make that atmosphere. We can only do so much. Uh, so I'm really grateful for the people who came came along and seen it and, and really supported it. And uh, I hope to see them back. I hope, I hope they come back and see it again. That's so good. I've seen uh, Owen put up a little comment there from Robert Anderson saying the place was absolutely bouncing. Uh, it was. Uh, it was the both nights. As I said, we only started out with two nights. Uh, it was the first time I'd ever done anything like that before. Like, first time I'd ever actually like written a show and produced it and then... Mm -hmm. Taking it somewhere like like that, I mean, the, the Amadillo is a, a major venue uh, in this country. Uh, so for somebody who's never done anything like that, to be able to kind of walk off the street and go there uh, is is unheard of, if anything. So to, for, for the way things worked out for those two shows, it was I couldn't ask for any more. I couldn't ask for any better. It was really it was it was something. It was very very special. It really was. Oh, good. Uh, it sounds to be absolutely outstanding, amazing night. And look, look at some of the comments, Stuart, in the uh, in the live chat. Uh, lots of praise for you and your work in, in the live chat. People like Nicholas and Robert, obviously, making comments and talking about your comedy being brilliant and everything. But, you know, thinking about, obviously, the journey back, uh, what's been, for you, what's been the most important part of creating that that play, the journey back, and what's meant the most to you about it? Uh, the connection to the fans. The, I mean, as a Rangers supporter, I, like, I felt as if... Uh, the, the fans deserve to have that strength and, and, and devotion that they showed over the past 10, 10 12 years. They deserve to have, a, to be congratulated on, on on going through that and staying with that. A, and I, I felt as if I wasn't... I not, not necessarily from the club, the club have done a few things, but I feel as if they, there wasn't really that... that Really, thank you for for staying there and, and 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 coming through all this with us. So to give that and also be a fan and go here, I've made this for us and everybody to to really accept it and, and take it with own arms and and uh, and understand where I was coming from and understand everything about it. That that was the that was the best thing about it. The fact that I wasn't the only person that felt as if this story needed to be told. Uh, and that people wanted to see it. That was that's the best. That was the best feeling, knowing that people wanted to come, and uh, and and I was doing something right, and I was doing something worthwhile uh, for the fans of this club. Because as I say, the past the past ten twelve years, there's there's no there's no football club in the world. The fans going through that that it's it's, it's, un, it's unheard of. It really really is. So the strength and the character of the of the support of this football club. Uh, is second to none, and I felt as if they needed to be congratulated on that. And, congratulated on that. and, uh, and that's uh, what I hope I try to do. It's a question in the live chat there, uh, Stuart, from Gallant Pioneer, who's one of our regular contributors on the channel. He says, uh, is the show available to watch on any platforms? Obviously, just exclusive to the theatre, or is there any plans to put it on any other platforms? There's, there's, there's talk every five minutes about uh, <laughs> what we should do or what we're going to do. Uh, my my initial thought was I wanted to take this show to every corner of the, every corner of the world because I felt as if every Rangers fan deserved to see this. Uh, so you wouldn't need to sit and watch it on DVD or you wouldn't need to sit and stream it. Uh, we were physically going to come to you because that was another thing as well. I mean, there's there's millions upon millions of Rangers fans all over the world and it's a shame that the ones that live in Glasgow would be the only ones to get to enjoy this and experience this. Uh, so our plans are to, to take this far and wide. Uh, I don't know after we do that, we might release it on DVD for people to have a look at in the future again. I'm not too sure, but as of now, there's mm -hmm. no plans to, to, to record that. Uh, we are more going to come to you and make sure you see it physically and enjoy it because you, 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 can't, you can't enjoy it in, the, in your living room. You know I mean, you need to be there and feel it. You need to do that. So hopefully we bring it to you if you want it that, mm -hmm. uh, to make sure you let us know you want it. We'll do it uh, that we would definitely want it in Canada, I can tell you that. There's a lot of Rangers supporters here that would gladly welcome it with open arms, especially around like the Toronto area and the Calgary area and different stuff yeah. like that. But you're 100% right. It's nice to, to actually experience theatre in a theatre, not just watching it on a DVD as a play, but yeah. experience what you said before, that, that like that shaking that happens when yeah, people are singing along with you, that atmosphere, that the goosebumps that come up when you hear your favorite song, it makes an absolute world of a difference. 
Definitely. Um, so I'd like to know. Oops, go ahead. Sorry, <laughs> no, I was, just, I was just going to touch on that point there exactly. Like when you're sitting yeah. in a room with three thousand other people who are fans of the same club, you're all in it together, and you're really kind of just feeling that energy and really feeling that connection. It's, it's something extremely special, and it can be replicated mm-hmm. on DVD or on TV. I mean, the videos you'll see on social media. I mean, as much as they look great, they don't touch what it was like that actual night. So that's why we're going to try and get it to as many places as we can, and uh, hopefully we can. I do. I've All got right, to say, I do like this. this co- I, I did slightly chuckle at this comment from Dean in, in the live chat, though. This did, did, did make me laugh. <laughs> Could I say like TV? <laughs> well, I'm probably getting to like TV before they put it on Rangers TV. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, how did you get into acting? Just gave it a chance. Just gave it a shot one day. Yeah. You know, was it just... something that you done when you were younger, smaller productions, or was it just something you're like, hey, you know what? Today I'm going to do this and. It just no. happened to work out so well for you. In the space of six years, I went from never writing or acting to selling out the armadillo twice. That's in the space incredible. Of you know what I mean? But that's, that's just what happens. Like if, you're, if you've got a passion for something and you want to try something and you want to try something new, I mean, you never know what you mm-hmm. can be good at. That's, that's basically what it was. It was just, I had a, a I've always been a creative person. I, I've, I've I've been a creative person in my full life, but I've never done anything to any any extent, uh, especially never acting or anything like that at all. Uh, it was just something I thought, well, I'll give it a chance one day. The rise of social media, being able to make uh, videos on your phone and easily uh, share them about, I mean, that, that helps hugely as well. But that that's where it kind of came from. Then I got um, I managed to just get a, a wee in with, a, with the BBC, uh, making sketches for them, and it went, it went from there. That was it. So mm-hmm. in the space of six years from nothing to this, basically. That's amazing. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very There's much. interesting comment here in the live chat. I want to pick up on this. Um, it says there was probably Celt- probably Celtic fans at the theatre show. <laughs> were you ever aware of any Celtic fans in the crowd or did that ever happen or was it just exclusively Rangers fans? Well, I, 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 can't, I can't make it exclusive to Rangers fans if, if they... It's, it's a Rangers show for Rangers fans, but if you're a Celtic fan and you wanted to come here, then... I've no idea why you would be there. Absolutely no idea at all. You'd have a terrible mm-hmm. night. Absolutely shocker any. night. <laughs> uh, but no, it's open were you to ever, all. <laughs> were you ever aware of any in the crowd at all? Or did, did, were you ever? No. I've got a few Celtic fan pals who were like, listen, I really want to support you, but there's no chance I'm going to that. I'm like, I, I, I don't want you to go. It's not for you. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so no, it's a, it's very much it's very much a, a show for Rangers fans. But in, a, but in actual fact, I mean the the, the, the story of the show. Uh, I mean there is an actual story in the show. It's a very uh, relevant story. It's not just it's not it's not just an hour and a half of us just going through everything that happened in the past ten years. There's an actual story. It's about a father and a son uh, and their relationship throughout the past thirty years. I mean, without giving things away, I mean, the show starts with uh, the father showing his baby son Rangers in the 90s, and then it goes through to what Rangers are now, and, and the son's an older man, and going through that, and him and his dad having to go through all the all the troubles uh, and making it way making it way back to the top again. So it's really it's a story more about family, more about what Rangers Football Club means to family and community, uh, and really means to the people who. Who live and breathe Rangers. I mean, it's it's it's, it's something that's that's drilled into you as soon as you're born here. Be that Rangers or Celtic. You know what I mean, like if mm-hmm. as soon as you're born, you're, that's it. It's it's very much a it's it's in your DNA. It's in your blood, and and that's what this show's about. Yeah. The, the show's more about that, about family, and about just what Rangers Football Club means to you and your family as as people, rather than a football club. Yeah, I like that a lot because I feel like when people watch that, it's not like they're just watching a show, but like you said, they see themselves in the show. They you yeah. see a, a father nowadays that has just had a son that's mm-hmm. going to be bringing him up as a Rangers supporter and introducing him to mm-hmm. this Rangers family that we have, where you have somebody yeah. that maybe comes with a, a grandparent and you have this amazing connection along the way. One hundred percent. It's it's a circle of life here and here in Glasgow and yeah. uh, in the world of Dover, we're Rangers fans. That that's what it is, uh, and that's basically what the show mm-hmm. is. Uh, the show is is all about 
family and 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 what Rangers Football Club means to that family and uh, mm -hmm. used the the past ten years like going down to the uh, from being one of the biggest teams in the world straight down to the bottom and that rise back up and just kind of what that done to the mentality of that family and like the their identity uh, mm -hmm. kind of taking a beating over the past ten years but coming out the other end there. Yeah. Because we did. <laughs> we did. We did it. We did it. <laughs> incredible, definitely an incredible, incredible journey for the club. You know, as, as like Victoria said about, you know, you obviously getting into acting. Do you have any future goals for your acting career, Stuart? Or, um, or is it all well, just based on this play? We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll take it as it goes. We'll see what happens. But hey, there's there's definitely plans. There's there's a lot more plans in the future for, for this show, for new shows. Hey, we'll just see what happens. We'll see where it goes. Um, maybe talk to me in a couple of years' time. We'll see where we are. Yeah, never know. You could sure. be playing the West End. Who knows? Honestly, as I say, <laughs> like, if you told me, if, 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 even if you'd have told me three years ago uh, that this is what I'd be doing with my life now, I wouldn't have believed you. Would not have believed you at all. So you never know what's around the corner. Mm -hmm. you, know, like, well, you just need to take chances and and uh, see where the roads go. And that's you never know. I mean, you could end up yeah, all the better. And that's that's what's happened. Mm -hmm. It's true. You might be able to take the show absolutely worldwide. Hopefully, no, I mean definitely. Hopefully, yeah. that's the that is the plan. But again, if it if it comes to it, brilliant. If it doesn't, we'll sort something else out. But again, we just need yeah. to we, we need to make sure if we're going to take it to different places that these places know we're coming and and the fan bases there yeah. uh, would come and see it. Otherwise, there's no point mm -hmm. in us going. There's no point in yeah. us going. No, yeah. of course. So yeah. I was going to ask you. A lot of times within the acting industry it can be a hard industry to be in. I know that from personal issues as well, but have you ever had a chance in your life where you're like, okay, I'm going to be doing this, like with the show, but there's been like a setback. Have you ever had any setbacks with creating this production that you've really had to push through? Uh, weirdly, weirdly enough, this one has actually went really smooth. Uh, for yeah. something that was such a massive, massive ask, I mean, it was it was near enough impossible. I remember turning around to some actor friends uh, last year, and I say to them, "Give me, give me six months. I'll write a show and I'll put it on in Amadillo. And they laughed. I mean, they, they completely laughed at me. And uh, but it managed to work out. Uh, except there was uh, there was small things, wee things, but nothing absolutely unbelievable. So. Uh, Hopefully they don't come, <laughs> but there's always setbacks. There's always something. I mean, there's there's always something you kind of need to just go over. Uh, but everything really kind of worked out for this one, and I don't know. I took it as a wee bit of a sign. Uh, for like for years and years, kind of really wanting to know what I was going to do in my life and where I was going to go, and it not really kind of working out. And then one time, it just worked out perfectly. So it was more like yeah. right, the time. It was it's all about the timing. Maybe it wasn't right to do it back then, but now it's right to do it now. Uh, so I'll take that as a win, you know. Oh, that's so good. And a little birdie, maybe it was you told me that you're supposed to be coming to North America to the NARSA convention this year with your pop-up shop, which is really exciting. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, originally we were trying to go over to Canada to do the show. That was the main, yeah. the, that was the original idea. The original idea was to bring the show to NARSA in uh, Toronto this year. Uh, but mm -hmm. the because the, the time the time scale, I mean, it's only like a month away, and uh, yeah, close. I, I mean, the, the shows was, all, was just in February, there. so by the time I finished those shows and kind of mm -hmm. started uh, talking to NASA and things like that, just time is against us. So, uh, who knows? Maybe, maybe next year, maybe we'll see, we'll see what we can do. But I'm coming over this year. Uh, I thought to myself, there's no point in me not being there. A really kind of yeah. connect with people a, from Canada and North America. As I said, mate, we're all one family. This is a show that's for our entire Rangers family, a, and everybody needs to know about it. So I'm coming over a, and just bringing some some merchandise over, just bringing some things over for you to to really a, get into the kind of feel of what the show is, and then hopefully we can bring the show over next year for you to actually enjoy and a, and see it in real life. Yeah, very good. I see there's um. There's a question there from Nicholas Moore in the live chat. I wonder if anyone can bring this up. Yeah, of course, yeah. This question for Stuart, go. would you start in two doors down if offered the part in the show? Of course, definitely. 100%. Mm -hmm. Like, as, that's my life now as an actor. That's that's what I do. Uh, luckily enough, I've been able to create my own work. That's something that's uh, 
not a lot of actors get a chance to do. Like being a writer first, uh, you can create your own work, and uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work. Just luckily, I've managed to create something that's connected with a lot of people. Uh, mm-hmm. At the end of the day, I'm still an actor, if, of course. If, if, if I was offered any any roles and 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 anything that I wanted to do, I'm 100. And I'm, I'm friends with Grado. Uh, Grado was actually the person that came. I got me into the theatre. Uh, okay. Weirdly enough, very very weirdly enough, I didn't even know he. I didn't even know that he knew who I was, and uh, it was him that, that actually set me on this path to doing the journey back. Uh, he was a member of the cast of the Rangers show. I was talking about called Rally Around the Rangers, and uh, he couldn't yeah. do it. He couldn't do it one year, and he messaged me and says, "Can you do it for me?" And that was it. So that that that's how I started on the journey of uh, of writing theatre and being in theatre. So yeah, definitely. Uh, if uh, if I was ever offered a role in a show that I that I wanted to do, then hundred percent. Oh, very good. Oh, and yourself. <laughs> There's a, yeah, there's a good comment here in the in the live chat as well from Robert Anderson said they said our children our grandchildren will be Celtic fans Stuart I love and appreciate the show so a bit of a adulation there from Robert for you Stuart right, thanks Robert thank you very much thank you and Gallant and um, I see another one Gallant says here that he wants uh, he says bring the show to Ayrshire save me travelling we tried to bring it to Ayrshire <laughs> a, a certain theatre in Ayrshire didn't want it so they shall rename name nameless <laughs> the Gaiety. No. <laughs> I can't. I can't do, do you ever find do you ever find that though, Stuart? You know, in, in Scotland, given obviously the partisan nature of football in Scotland, that there's certain areas that would never entertain having a Rangers show there. One hundred well, one hundred percent. That that's kind of the battle we're kind of having just now. Like when it comes to doing theatre uh, in Scotland, there's only a certain amount of theatres that will actually take shows on, regardless of what they are. Uh, a lot yeah. of theatres are pre-booked by touring shows from London uh, so to get in is extremely hard uh, but to get in with something that's obviously could cause a bit of a divide uh, is even harder so that was one of the reasons we were supposed to do a tour this year we were supposed to do a UK tour uh, but we've we struggled with with exactly that we've tried to get venues and try to get places uh, as of now we're going to Dunfermline sorry we're going to Dunfermline uh, in September and we're going to Elgin next year. Uh, that's the only places we've got just now. We might get more, we might see what happens, but uh, I think when it comes to Scotland or the UK, Glasgow, Glasgow is the shows that you come come and see. You know what I mean? Come and come 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 and see those those are those are the big ones. Not to say the ones in Dunfermline and the one in Elgin, they'll be fantastic because we're bringing the full cast, everything, full shebang. But uh, in terms of us booking any other shows. Uh, in the UK, uh, because of the, the situation we find ourselves in with theatres, it may not be possible, but we'll do what we can. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, given that obviously, must the, the, be a bit difficult. I mean, uh, there's a lot of one thing I've noticed on Twitter, uh, Victoria and Stuart, is there's an awful lot of uh, Rangers supporters clubs all over, for instance, England. Um, sure. you know, mm-hmm. Loads, just everywhere yeah. you go. You know, London obviously has got a big one. There's West Midlands, etc. Would that be something, I know you said about the theatre's been pre-booked, but would that be anything you'd consider in the long run, perhaps bringing the show down to England? 100%. England was a massive part of what we were going to do. I actually went down to the Gallant Pioneer in Blackpool, uh, if that's the mm-hmm. same Gallant Pioneer that's on the chat just now. Uh, we went down to Blackpool, and uh, we were in with uh, the Winter Gardens in Blackpool, which is a fantastic theatre, absolutely gorgeous place. And uh, we were originally going to do it in the summer. We were going to do it this summer. Uh, and we'll, we'll just try to see if we can maybe do it next year. So if there was anywhere we were going to do in England, I think we would probably stick to Blackpool. I've spoke to a lot of London-based uh, Rangers supporters clubs as well. They're obviously keen on it as well. Uh, listen, if there's, a, if there's a proper demand, if there is a full-on proper demand uh, to take this show to places, then we will go, but the demand needs to be 400, 500 strong. That's that's unfortunately the, the the numbers we need to pull in if we're going to take it down to a uh, like London or Blackpool or anywhere like that at all. Uh, we've got a big pull up in Glasgow. I mean, we can sell out three thousand seater venues up here, but there's a there's massive amounts of rangers all over, the, all over the world. But those supporters clubs might have like forty people in them, and as much as they're all like, oh, I'd love to see your show, and I'd love to bring it to you, but we, we can't come all the way down to these places just to play for like. 
20, 30 people. We need to actually have a substantial amount of people that would come to these shows. So that's why we're doing them so so little and so far between, uh, just to kind of create a buzz and, 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 and create that. But listen, if there's, if, there's a, if there's places out there that we can fill, a 500, 600 tier venues, then 100% will be there. There's a question uh, from Aldo here in the live chat. It says, when are you next in Glasgow, Stuart? We're in uh, the second, third and f- the second, third and fourth of February, uh, 2024. We are in the Armadillo uh, in Glasgow. So some weekend, uh, and as I say, if the last one goes back, Eden Court, uh, we, we tried Eden Court. We tried to get Eden Court. Uh, they were fully booked in Inverness. So that's why we're now going to Elgin. So that was the closest we could get to Inverness was a uh, was Elgin. Nicholas Moore mm-hmm. says uh, South Wales Cardiff Brian Loudrop RSC would love to see Stuart's show. Uh, interesting question here from Alexander. Uh, how about doing the show in Edmiston House? Uh, that'd be something that Rangers would have to have to deal with. Uh, we've had little contact with Rangers. It's uh, it's very much it's a separate thing from from anything the club we would would necessarily deal with. Uh, but if there was ever a conversation, then we would gladly have a listen and uh, see where it goes. Absolutely. So, where's your ambition to take it next, Stuart? You know, in terms of countries around the world, you know, have you got any ambition to take it anywhere in particular? Which countries? The main places we are looking at are uh, NASA over in America and Canada, uh, and mm-hmm. Austin is probably Australia. Uh, well, we're looking at Australia, uh, we're looking at Sydney and Melbourne. Uh, and we'll see what happens with that. We'll see uh, if it's a viable option. If we can, we've, we've been in contact. We've been in talks with uh, with the, the supporters clubs in in uh, Sydney and in, and in Melbourne. Uh, and if something can be done, then we'll go. If it works out for everybody, if it, if it's a value val- viable option for us to go all the way, because it's a long way away. <laughs> it's a long, long yeah. way away. Uh, but if, if, if it's a viable option to, to get anywhere, we will take it anywhere as long as we know when we get there it's going to be well received and as in well received like filling places you know Yeah exactly, I like what a Gallant Pioneer said because it's so true, the show has to be profitable as well, can't run out of loss, you have to make sure that it's like you said, it's worth your while to go there, it's able to make profit, there's lots of people able to come all at once and share that let's call it ibrox atmosphere 100 i mean it's a it's a very big show it's actually it's a it's a very big production and it costs a lot of money to put on a uh, mm-hmm. just staggering amount of money to put on. <laughs> I, 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 mm-hmm. and, uh, but we've shown that we can do it i mean the the, the the range of support is out there and they are getting their money's worth i mean they, these people pay a lot of money to come and see this so the show is something that replicates the the money that they're spending on it uh, but in terms of like the people that are behind the scenes the cast i mean there's like 10 is in the cast and then there's about another 10 15 people behind backstage that do the sound the lights uh, and then the transport to i mean you've got the sets you've got the projector screens you're probably talking about yeah. we've got about an entourage of about 30 people that we'd need to take to all these places so that's why I'm saying, if, as much as there's a million Rangers supporters clubs all over the world that go, I'd love to see it, I'd love to see it, and we'd love to bring it to you, but unless we can go to your town and we can fill 500 seats, and then it, it might not be an option for us, but it doesn't mean we're not going to be somewhere close to you where you can come, you know? Mm-hmm. It's a question good, here they'll just travel to you. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> There's a question here from Gallant in the live chat. It says, uh, Stuart, uh, do you still see the do the wee five minute sketches on Scottish football on social media? I've not done one in a while. Uh, the show took up my time, uh, unfortunately, but uh, I'm not looking to get back at them. Probably do one on Sunday, to be honest with you. <laughs> do, but uh, I had to take a, just a couple of months off there because as we were doing the show uh, and that was taking up a lot of my time. But no, 100%. I mean, that's that's my bread and butter. That's what, what got me the, the audience that, that's able to put these shows on and, and fill these shows. Uh, so definitely. And uh, I'm looking at any writing, uh, writing a full play about some characters that uh, I do in the sketches. I've got a sketch uh, that I do quite a lot called The Workies, and it's two it's two guys in a work van, and uh, one supports Rangers, one supports Celtic, and they're just at each other's throats all day, and uh, they're always very well received. I mean, I think we've got like some like 1.2, 1.3 million views collectively wow. on just sketches of those characters, 
Uh, so we're actually looking just now to to maybe do a one-off show uh, based on the characters and, and see how it goes. But I'm not too sure about having a mixed crowd. <laughs> <And> <laughs> it's, been done before. it's been done before. There's, there was a there was a big p- a play in Glasgow called uh, "I'm No a Billy, I'm a Tim," and it was a mixed crowd. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's been done before uh, successfully. So there's no reason why I can't do it as well. But so there's a lot. There's a lot. Uh, there's a lot in the, in, in the plans. There's a lot going on in the next. You'll see a lot going on in the next couple of years. Uh, there's a big thing coming up. Uh, at the end of next year that I can't speak too much about just now. Uh, but this will be the party to end all parties. So keep an um, eye out for that. that sounds <laughs> fun. Yeah. That would be fun, so yeah. good. So as you were speaking there about obviously the two sides of the city, we all yeah. know there's a massive game coming up very shortly called the old firm. If a couple of people have heard about it here or there. Stuart, <laughs> are you nervous? Are you excited? What is your oh. view on that in comparison to the previous games that we've obviously had and, God forbid, the most recent one? Yeah. Listen, when it comes to old firm games, everything goes out the window. Like, uh, we could be having the worst run of all time, but when it comes to old firm games, I'm always I'm always confident you need always to be. Like, you need to be. I, I, I'm not one of those Rangers fans that goes in an old firm game thinking, oh, we could get a doing here today. As much as... It could be a possibility. You, uh, there's there's no way that's how I'm spend, spending my day. Same thing every time. As soon as, as soon as you're up in the morning, you get the tunes on, and that's it. You're away. <laughs> I mean, and, and get and get and get it going and, and back your team. Anything can happen in an old firm game. Form doesn't come into an mm-hmm. old firm game at all. Doesn't matter how well Celtic are doing. Doesn't matter how well Rangers are doing. Or doesn't matter how bad or Rangers and Celtic are doing. Doesn't matter on an old firm day. Whatever happens on that day happens on that day. I mean, you could come, yeah. we could go in here on Sunday. And, see Rangers stick four by Celtic or you can be all the way around I mean these it's an anomaly these games so listen I learned a long time ago that you just take it as it comes whatever happens on Sunday happens on Sunday there's nothing you can do about it that's it you're 100% right how do you feel about that Only you're on the same page as Stuart or are you a little bit more nervous than he is I, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with what Stuart's got to say. You know, form does go out the window in an old firm game. You can have the most freakish results possible. You know, like he says, you can stick four or five past them and they, or they can stick, heaven forbid, four or five past us. Mm-hmm. Am I nervous? I think I'm more nervous after last Sunday's performance than I am obviously going, you know, going forward. I, it, I think just because everything has come down to this game, hasn't it? This season, it, it is everything. It, this is this is the season, isn't it? You know, we, we've got to we've got to win on Sunday. We've got to get to the cup final because this is all we've got left to play for. Really, we've got what those five games after this game in the league, which realistically yeah. mean absolutely nothing. Yeah. Um, they're just dead rubbers. This is it, isn't it? It's just a huge, huge game for for Rangers, isn't it? And it's just it, it matters so much on Sunday and. Uh, you know, what what are your plans for watching the game on Stuart? Wait, uh, for, on Sunday, Stuart, where are you going to be and what's the plans? What I do in an old firm game now is I sit with my dad because I, I can't go to a pub anymore. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't really go too much. There's, there's one or two pubs that I can go to that, uh, that I, I feel comfortable in. Uh, there's not too many pubs now that, that I can I can really kind of go to. Uh, but I sit with my dad. So I, I, I sit with my dad and watch, uh, watch old firm games now. Uh, and just shout and scream at the telly. That's all I do for a full 90 minutes. Mad. There was a question very earlier on the live chat I didn't bring up, obviously, because it wasn't That's in the so flow nice. of the show, but, uh, but Jordan Wotherspoon asks, uh, Stuart, who do you want to see Rangers sign in the summer? A striker. And I don't as long as they, as long as they can score goals, that's that. I do not care. Uh, I'm not one of those people. There's a lot of people out there that, that are clued up on who they should sign or keep an eye out on. Like, oh, that player's doing well for other teams. I mean, that's that's where I feel. Like, I, I I can't really tell you who I would be interested in. Shanklin probably uh, going by his record in in Scottish football. Uh, apart from that, I'm on, I'm really on I'm, I'm unsure. There's a few players I feel as if we do need to replace. I think we need to get ready Barisic. I think we need a new uh, a new somebody somebody new in that position. Uh, and I feel as if we we can't well and Raskin coming in. I feel as if they have really strengthened the team. So. Uh, I don't think there's going to be too much of a change there. I don't know if John Lundstrom's going to stay. I don't know if he needs somebody to kind of replace him. He's not really kind of firing in all cylinders anymore, which is absolutely upsetting because I really enjoyed John. Uh, but my main concern is that we're not scoring goals. It's as simple as that. When you look at the team at the other side of the city, I mean, they've got goal scorers galore in their team. They've got about three or four uh, uh, goal scorers that they, they, they could... They, they, 
it's going about three or four a game if they want. We don't we don't have that, and, and that's goals goals scored uh, scoring goals wins games, uh, and we don't have that. And that, that's what it comes down to. So I, I need to see us really put some serious money into a proven goal scorer. And if Shankland is the man for that, which I feel he is in Scotland, I'm not too sure about how he how he do in Europe, uh, but definitely in Scotland, I feel as if Shankland would be would be the right idea. And uh, I saw in Butland as well. Okay, the keeper as well. I, I did hear about Butland coming in. Uh, he, I, I'd, I'd take Butland 100. You know what I mean? Like a shadow, I doubt. Uh, I think it's, it's time for Griggsy to go as much as we all love him uh, I felt as if last season it would have been the perfect time for him to go uh, but he stayed uh, but now surely he'll do the right thing and go but he, he's a, he's been an absolute ambassador for the club and, and, and we love him mm-hmm. dearly but it's time to get somebody else in yeah, 100% agreed, yeah, 100% agreed. And, and yeah Butland's a class act I mean he's he's a big old unit he's 6'5 good at coming for crosses good at dominating his box something that obviously uh, McGregor hasn't done this season so yeah I agree with Stuart there he, he's definitely someone uh, well worth keep coming in yeah. Um, this year definitely uh, Garland Pioneer talked about John Lundstrom he says Lundstrom's got another year on his contract so unless someone buys him he'll be here next season um, he's out of contract yeah, there's him and Bob, there's him Borna and uh, Mr Glass himself Kamar Roof obviously who's out of contract next year yeah. listen <laughs> I mean we all love John Lundstrom we, we all do I mean he was, he was the he was the hero uh, uh, last season I mean he really was he was that he was that cult figure in the team he uh, built a tank just a guy who played for the jersey you really felt as if he understood what it felt to, to play for Rangers and understood what it meant to play for Rangers he's just not been that player this year and it's it's well, it's broke my heart to kind of watch him not hit the heights of where he's been and what we expected from him this season is I, I don't know what's going on with him I don't know what the difference is but he's just he's he, he's not playing like a proper Rangers player anymore especially after the highs they had last season I mean it's just it's a fall for grace and uh, I'd love to see him stay if he pulls his finger out, he's behind. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I did find this, this this comment here is is slightly funny. I did, did find this funny from Dave. He says, Sakala should change the junior to Jigsaw in his name because he goes to pieces every time he's in the penalty box. Listen, Sakala is one of those players that's came on leaps and bounds. Though. I mean, like last season, he was, what? I mean, uh, and then uh, when he got his chance that season, he's... He's really did. He was he's, he's well for for a while there, and he and he was somebody that was that was scoring the goals and getting himself in good positions. I mean, I just watched the highlights back there uh, for the Aberdeen game, and there was one. He was one in one in goal, and uh, he turned the boy brilliantly, so he can get himself in these positions and he can make these runs. And he is an intelligent player, but it's just he's not consistent enough. And pay the money, buy somebody who's consistent. That's all we need. That's all we need. Yeah. I think we'd be all right. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, no, I totally stand... agree with you there. Yeah. Where do you stand on the uh, Ryan Kent uh, debate at the moment, uh, Stuart? I'd sell Ryan. I would I would definitely say I'm a... I feel as if Ryan Kent's... Uh, Ryan Kent hit the heights probably the season before Gerard left. I... Probably the 20... What was it? The 2018, 2019 season... I feel as if that's Ryan Kemp was that was his best season. As much as he was great for the season we won fifty five, I feel uh, ever since that f- first season he's just went gradually down, 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 and that's it. He's, he's not pulling out the magic anymore. He's inconsistent. Uh, so I'm just going to keep on going back to that word. There's too many Rangers players that are inconsistent. It's really it's, it's that mm-hmm. simple, and that's why the team on the other side of the city are winning leagues because they are consistent. I mean, if, if it comes to a Celtic game, you know for a fact you're going to go out there and you're, you're going to see a performance. It's very rare this season that you see them slacking. Whereas when it comes to Rangers, it's, it's the luck of the draw. It's like they're rolling a dice in, in, the, in the dressing room to see how well they'll play that day. So it, it all comes down to consistency. And Ryan, Ryan Kent's no, not a consistent player for Rangers anymore. And uh, he's, he's got to go. I mean, that's that's his contract up, isn't it? That's enough. Yeah. Yeah. So I think... Mm-hmm. I, 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 I don't think Rangers would offer him. Well, they probably would, but I, I wouldn't offer him another contract. I, I, I wouldn't offer him another one. And, uh, but I guarantee he's probably got something lined up and he'll be away. 100%. 100 uh, a couple of comments in the live chat. It's Scar's type of player. If he, think, if, if he thinks what he's going to do, he messes it up. Yeah, um, I agree with that. And, <laughs> yeah. and Gallant Pioneers, yeah. I've not seen a Rangers performance since that 99 Hoven. 
yeah, yeah I'd, I'd, mm-hmm. I'd say the same, one hundred percent. I really, really would. Uh, I'm, I'm actually struggling to sit here and actually think of of any pause I've seen in the last the, the, the last five or six games. You know what I mean? It's mine's drawn a blank to be honest with you uh, I'm, I'm not really seeing anything one thing we actually were touching on before we came on air was, uh, was Scotty Arfield I, I, I really like Scott Arfield yeah. I think I think he's he's somebody who's a wee bit of a missing link in our team and he's not getting a chance uh, I, 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 would, I would play Scott Arfield a lot more and maybe see a difference in Rangers uh, anytime he comes on the park, it does lift us up, and you see him creating chances. You see him getting into dangerous areas, and I mean, you only need to look at the, the time he came on against Aberdeen and, and scored his two goals and got the winner. Uh, and it, he's done it consistently against Celtic several times. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised to, to put Arfield on the on the, the scorer sheet on Sunday if he gets on. Uh, I'd like to see Arfield back in the team, and maybe we'd see something that, that's worth not, noting and, and worth talking about. To be honest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I definitely agree with you there. It was really unfortunate as well how Rangers didn't take the opportunity to get fresh legs on the pitch for the last game that we had. I yeah. feel like there was players just sitting on the edge, wanting to come on, wanting to put in their two cents for it. That could have got as a goal, but yet yeah, somebody decided not to put him on. Mm-hmm. And I know we all spoke about that before. I mean, you've seen... And basically sit there and get himself ready. And then all of a sudden he's putting on his jacket and he's waiting. Like yeah. these things don't make sense going through my head. It just give them an opportunity. We're already mm-hmm. down. What's the worst that can happen? I feel I, I feel as if Scott I feel the type of player that would run, would run through a wall to play for Rangers. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and, and and he's not getting he's not getting used. He's not getting used at all. Yeah. Or he's getting bit parts, he's getting the last couple of minutes of the game. That's, that's nonsense. For a player that's, that's yeah. notable to come on the last 20, 25 minutes of a game and really make a difference and even grab a winner, I mean, he's got that on his track record. I've no idea why he's not getting used more often. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's going to be an absolutely massive, massive summer ahead for Rangers, isn't it, Stuart? Just, I think we're going to see an awful lot of change this summer. Um, how many? If you had to put a number on it, how many players do you think we need to bring in to, to really put ourselves in a position to compete with uh, with our friends from across the city? I'd say about four, three or four. I don't think it'd be. I mean, bringing in Cantwell and Raskin, I think that that's that's really brought some uh, some really good. Uh, the depth of the squad. We need a keeper. I think Barisic is gone, so there are well, two. So two with him, and I think we need to get a striker. I mean, we need a striker, and we need a uh, if Kent's away, guys, another winner. Because who are we sitting with? We're sitting with Scott Wright, and I think Scott Wright's a good player, uh, but he's not full Rangers quality. We need if we're going to spend the money, spend the money in getting getting a keeper in, getting a winger in, and getting a striker in. I would take that any day. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with you there. How do you think uh, next season is going to look for us? Do you, are you optimistic? Do you think it always, can only go better from always, here? Always. Perfect. You're you on the same page as positivity. You be, listen, man, you need to be. You can't like the, the you can't be sitting with doubts or grumps in your head. You always need to just move forward. You always need to like keep keep moving forward. That's it. Next season's next season. We're winning it, and if we don't win it, we'll win the next one. Not bad. Exactly. And obviously there's so many changes going on within Rangers right now, even like within the board, within players and different things. So change is always a good thing. We have to change to develop different ways. And if something isn't working, it's time to try something different. So mm-hmm. it'll be interesting. It'll be very interesting to see the news that comes out in, let's say, the next couple of months for our, for our beautiful team, the Glasgow Rangers. 100%. I totally agree. Question in the live chat for you here, Stuart. Yeah, says, uh, Hursty017 says, Stuart, who is your favourite ever Rangers player and why? Uh, George Alberts. George Alberts, every day of the week. Uh, I was born in 89, so I grew up with the 90s team and some of my earliest memories were the hammer. I mean, just watching him scalp 40 yarders and breaking people's jaws. <laughs> no, I mean, just that, that was it. So he was a he was my my, my childhood hero. I've actually got a top. Uh, I kindly got given to me uh, uh, a ninety nine uh, uh, the the ninety nine two thousand top, and it's got Alberts on the back. Uh, it's all original. It's cracking. I absolutely love it. And uh, and even in the play, the journey back. Uh, my name's George Alberts in it. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> 
I can't give it. So you, if you want to figure out what, what that means, you may come and see it. <laughs> did you ever get a chance to meet him? I did when I was younger. Uh, my dad used to take mm-hmm. his uh, and, and watch them. Uh, I can't remember what it was. I used to go with my, my autograph book. Uh, I remember meeting Aww. Gio. Uh, I remember meeting Gio. I, met, I remember meeting a lot of the players back in the day, back in the, back in the early 90s, about in 95, 96. Uh, mm-hmm. I, between like 95 and 98, even, sorry. I, it would be my, with my autograph book, meeting the players. I, so I did, I got to meet him. I mean, hopefully I get to meet him again. Yeah. Hopefully. Well, there's some good ones coming to Narsa this year, so I'm sure you'll get to bump heads with a couple of nice little players. Definitely, definitely. I mean, mm-hmm. listen, the, the Rangers players have met, have, have all been great, and even the Rangers players have reached out to me after the show. There's been a few that reached out to me eh, after That's the show, nice. and they've all been absolutely fantastic. You know what I mean, so always, always, it's, it's great to to actually know that there's Rangers players out there that know who you are and and, and know what you do. It's it's, it's mm-hmm. surreal. You know what I mean, it is it really exactly. Is. Mm-hmm. I think it comes down to the whole Rangers fans supporting Rangers fans. And even That's if you're a Rangers player, you're still a Rangers fan. So you're going to support your own. You're going to support what I like to call the Rangers family. And that's 100%. what it's all about. So if any of the Rangers family that is on here on the live chat right now wants to find you, how could they go about finding more about the journey back? And then maybe a little bit more about yourself. Any websites or? Yeah, I've got hundreds. Yeah, we've got all the official things. If you just search for the journey back on Google, on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok, uh, it'll all come up. If you search Stuart Hay on every one of them as well, uh, they'll all come up. You'll see absolutely everything. Uh, just stay away for the stay away for the newspaper clippings when you when you write in Stuart Hay into Google. <laughs> They're no good ones. <laughs> Boy, uh, that's that. No, so we're, we're very easy. It's very easy to find us if you just search for the journey back. Uh, in any of your social medias, if you search for Stuart Hay in any of your social medias, you'll find it. Uh, mm-hmm. Links to that, everything. We've got the journeyback.com. Uh, we've got we've got a shop. We've got a merchandise shop. It's uh, StuartHayMerch.com. Uh, we can buy journeyback scarves, journeyback uh, magnets, and t-shirts and things like that. And uh, mm-hmm. actually, we've got we've got one wee bit of merch that we're going to that, that we might uh, bring out this weekend, depending on the result. So I forget I could resolve this weekend that we have new bit of merch that people might enjoy. Oh, very good. Well, thank you so much sure, for coming on the show. And I really no appreciated you being here, getting in chat with our fans that are on the show. And maybe as well they'll get a chance to come out and see your show, The Journey Back. Well, Owen, hopefully. you enjoy yourself today? Absolutely. It's been great. Been great having Stuart on. Uh, great hearing about the journey back and obviously chatting through uh, Rangers things as well. And I'm hoping that uh, Stuart does bring the show south of the border so I can get there um, yeah. at some point. I mean, I know I'm planning, obviously, I will be coming up to Glasgow at some point. So, but uh, I do hope mm-hmm. that uh, he'll bring it down to England at some point. And uh, Stuart, if, you, if, you're, if you're around, I'll, I'll buy you a beer, a beer after the show. <laughs> no problem at all. Thanks for much having me on. It's been a pleasure. And uh, it's just great to really to connect with people, as I said at the start, and really kind of. Is, is get the word out there and, and see, uh, talk to everybody about Rangers. I mean, you know, Rangers fans, and it's all about the family, exactly what Victoria says. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And some really nice comments in the live chat as well, um, saying, obviously, uh, Gallant Pius is excellent show, excellent guest tonight. Thank Nick you. More brilliant pod tonight. Thank you to everyone in the live chat. All right. All Victoria. right, so we'll sign off here, and I'm sure we'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you shortly. Bye. Back to speak to you, yeah. Keep checking out, obviously, Glasgow Ranger Station.